I will call the uh, regular meeting of the Cromer Town Council to order for whatever the day is, March 21st. And I will recognize myself to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the Invocation. Nope. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're here tonight, gathered tonight, uh, and able to, to be here and conduct your business in this town, conduct the business for this town. Uh, we just ask you, Lord, for your wisdom, your guidance, uh, and give us the uh, knowledge and strength to make decisions that are good for this town. Um, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> Next item on the agenda is the reading of the minutes for March 7th. Is there a motion uh, to approve the minutes as written? So moved. And is there a second? Second. And any discussion? Yeah, I have, uh, I have some changes that need to be made. Okay. They're minor changes. Okay. Page one, under report of standing, um, third paragraph, last sentence, <laughs> that should be, instead of a silk fence, it should be a silt fence. Mm. And... Very last page. Oh, yeah. I think it's uh, Mr. Waits. Yes, W A I T. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. <laughs> How do you get in the place? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, where was that? Oh. Okay, where's the silk fence? This, this the sort of standing? Right here. Okay, thank you. Got it. And Mr. Waits was where? At the last line. Very last, very last page, sir. No, the last page. Yes, sir. Oh, this page. Oh. Okay. Okay. Any other? Seeing none, all in favor then of the minutes being approved as amended with the two corrections, uh, do so with show of hands. Next item is uh, Mr. Brown's administrative briefing. Mr. Brown, anything you want to add? Uh, no, sir. Any questions of Mr. Brown on the briefing? Seeing none. Next is amendments to the agenda. Any amendments to the agenda? And consideration of communications. Any consideration of communications? I do. I have one. Um, it has to do with um, the police report. What I would like to see um, pertaining to zone enforcement is I would like to see a more uh, extensive explanation of what is going on with the abatements. What I want to see is I want to see the date, you know, property, the date, um, uh, what, and then what has transpired. If it's been, um, if it's been, it's been uh, abated, terrific. Um, I want to see that, and then I want to see it gone, the next meeting. I would like this each and every meeting. We have an update. We can put it on the screen. It's public. 
knowledge, right? We can put it up on the screen, and that way the citizens can see exactly what progress we're making, council meeting to council meeting. I left my iPad at home, so I don't know. We do a breakdown each month already. Uh, it gives me information on how many daily notices were issued. It tells me uh, how many tickets were issued, how many games, how many were heard in court, uh, what their fine was. Excellent. If, if we can have like an Excel spreadsheet of that, actually, it's perfect. That's right. That's right. You're saying no? Well, when, when, let me ask you a question. When you write a citation, what, what are you putting on the citation? If you want us to do the ones that we cite, the ones that, that clear the abatement, we, you still want them, that, that address we give you. Uh, I, yeah, I, I still, I want to see what is going on as we try and clean up the, the blight in this town. I, I want the citizens to be aware of what we're doing. So you want something that would show every abatement notice, address, and then when it gets cleared, that it got cleared. If yeah. it didn't get cleared, then it got a ticket. That's right. And then you could kind of see how many get cleared and how yeah. many get tickets and then repeat what happens offenders. after they... Excuse it's me. Okay repeat to show offenders. the addresses? <clears throat> it's okay to... Okay. Yeah, the only thing I would say, I would be a little bit from Bob and Eric, Mike, is... Well, and I don't know if we, if we give somebody an abatement notice and we put it on that screen, are we? I don't think we, I don't think we put it on the screen. Yeah, I mean, we may, we can give us a report, but I don't know that we can put it up there. Can't show it to the public. Right, because. I don't think so, not until, I don't think. I don't know if that's like. I'd have to, for you. I'd have to think about that. Where you're charging somebody or claiming their. Well, then can can we, instead of making it public in that way, can there just be um, not an address note, but uh, another note, a, a reference number? So if we wanted to check, we could check. But again, I, I want the citizens to be able to know exactly how we, how aggressive we're going out and being in the community on this. If you can, if you can give me that in the next packet, then I can, and then I can see if that's gonna, if that's gonna work for me. And all right, thank you. Just like on a spreadsheet, like what a, yeah, okay. All those people are getting busted for possess, simple possession of marijuana. Do they come into uh, court here? They, There has to be three possession charges before it. Three ounces is talking about the amount. One 
communication I wanted to share. We got this list from Bob on this resurfacing roads for Richland County. Yes. There was 189 roads on there, and I guess this is for this budget year, um, which is about over with them. Um, there were 56 roads um, on that list that were in this area, area one, area two. Um, and there were 20 roads that are in Irmo, um, which I don't know if that's a good percentage or not. It was 31.6 miles, I added it up. Mm, okay. <laughs> so they're doing some stuff. Seven of those roads were in District 2, which is kind of back here in this um, neighborhood back here near um, Columbiana. And 13 were in Old and Euphrates Gate, um, <coughs> which is the two subdivisions that are mainly in Richland County. So it's a good amount. Not great, but maybe next year they'll do another 20-some. Oh, yeah. Um, Assuming they get all that done. Yeah, I don't know where they're at. I know some of these roads have been paid because I drive on them, but some of these, I'm not sure because I don't go down those roads. But they do. They did 20 out of 189 in our town. So, any other communications? Seeing none. Uh, next item is presentation by citizens. This is where anyone who would like to address council on something on the agenda. Uh, you may do so at this time. All we ask is you give us your name and address for the record. anyone else next item is unfinished business item a uh, ordinance 1708 this is the one that has to do with the privacy fence being properly installed is there a motion for third and final reading I make a motion and is there a second second any discussion um, the uh, wording in there should be I think should be modified Again, you're requiring our code enforcement people to be building engineers to be, make the determination that something is built to standard, building standards, and I don't think they're qualified to do that. If you want to make them qualified, then chief can send them back to school and have them take uh, entry-level engineering classes and get a certification from Midlands Tech that gives them that ability to do that but I don't think we want to go that route. Uh, so I would make a motion that we uh, strike the words uh, qualified building standards, I think it is. Let me see here. It's right here, Barry. Standard building practices? Yes, yeah, standard, standard building practices, accordance with standard building practices. Just strike that, those four words. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second, you'd almost have to get an inspector's license to do right. this. No, to make that no, I don't think so. No, you don't. Um, standard. I think building. we're talking about common sense here. No, we're not. We're talking about standard building practices. No. And that's not right now. Practices. Right standard now, we're practice. trying to address one situation where, to comply with this current ordinance, the way it was written. All the guy did is he bought a fence and he leaned it up against the junk pile that's there. That's what he did. What we're saying is it's got to be put into the ground. So say that. But the, okay, that's what properly installed means. 
Well, properly installed could and mean maintained. I'm going to go dig a hole and lean it in there and be done with it right away. Okay. Anybody knows that a fence should be put in the ground and you either put gravel around it or concrete or whatever you do and you tamp it and you do all that stuff. And then it's properly installed. And I think that's all you do is go look at it and make sure it's installed. Um, um, otherwise, we'll be coming back later and changing it again because someone tied one from a tree. Uh, right. Who knows what. Right. Um, so. I agree with you, except in the real estate laws that exist on property inspection and all that, they they have a list of standard building practices. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I I just didn't think we wanted to get into that. We are into code, and I, I like properly installed and maintained. Period. <laughs> yeah, the exactly. standard building practice brings in something else that I don't know that we're What's really properly good. installed? What you said? Well, <laughs> no. That's standard What's building. Properly that's installed. properly installed to standard building practices. What is properly installed without yeah. what? Properly installed. But when you buy it, it and has a th the post that goes in the ground and the fence that goes. All of it's there. So if somebody comes up and just leans it in the ground and puts a two no, by no, four no, behind it. No, no, no. That's not properly installed. Well, how do you know? Because I said so. No. Oh, well. <laughs> that's why we put it in here with standard building. So everybody well, understands there is a, a standard. Okay, it's not just. You're, you're running the risk of hiring a building inspector. No, we're not. Sure really you are. It is. You, you come to my house really and tell me that this is not built to proper building like standards. Where's your degree? Without inspection by a building. And I didn't write this. I think Eric looked at it and he said that okay. was the way it should Well, be. if I can interject here, I had some work recently done on my property by Lowe's. And they have a statement in their contract that says that it will be in accordance with standard building practices. Nobody came and inspected their work. But they were licensed contractors, right? They were licensed in Richland County, yeah. but nobody inspected their work. Lowe's just guaranteed it would be installed according to standard business pra standard building practices. If they're licensed, they have to be. I, they know that. They, right. know that's part of it. But they're subject to inspection. That, they are if you sell it. If I may, Eric, if we were to, is there a standard building practices book? Um, <laughs> and if I'm understanding this correctly, too, this doesn't apply to every fence in town. This really is a privacy fence. It's a privacy fence that is used to hide junk. Um, Th that's not what they all hide. No, but this sentence here is in the ordinance with hiding junk. It says you can keep your junk, you just got to hide it behind a six foot privacy fence installed. Um, we don't have another ordinance, I don't think, that says all fences have to be properly installed. We would have to add that to somewhere else. I haven't seen that. I'm not aware of it. Yeah. So this one is only going to address when people have a lot of junk and we can see it. We can tell them you need to hide it behind that fence. Is that somewhere in the ordinance? What? That we're hiding junk with this ordinance. This is in that, yeah, nuisance section 1432, okay. unsanitary, unsightly. That's in with that. It's under nuisance. Yeah. We're only editing it. It says we're hiding junk. Well, it says you can hide your stuff behind a privacy fence or you can put it in a building or something like that. You can hide your stuff behind mm -hmm. it. I don't know if we can pull it up on there real quick where the 1432 is. Or? If y'all are happy with it, it's fine. I may have it. Um, when did we pass that? I don't think it's on here because wasn't it a couple of months ago? Yeah, I may have it in my older stuff. Do we know when we passed that? 
Was that two? I think it was a couple two? of months ago. It's not on the pages anymore. Uh, I'll see if I can find it and read it. Okay, I did blocking such items from view from the public. Is that hiding your junk? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's my terminology, uh, southern slang way of putting it. But yeah, that's, and that's what we said. You had to put it behind a fence. Then we came back and said you got to put it behind a properly in tall fence, and six foot, not four foot. But that only has to do with that. Hiding your junk. Yeah. Okay. So if we ride up to somebody else's house and they got a leaning fence, does this really apply to them? It really wouldn't because we're not there to, or would it apply to them? Yeah. Why wouldn't it? Well, that's why I'm just trying to clarify because I don't, I don't know. Chief, if we, <laughs> if we rode up to somebody's house and the fence was leaning, would this apply to them? <coughs> what does it say? The <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it does either. So all those other people, we we can't make them fix their fence. Big burn. All those other people, we can't make them fix their fence. It only applies. But notice how you just said you just say a word about accordance with standard building practices. <laughs> I mean, you don't need that, and you're going to cause problems <laughs> if you give me a ticket and say that I didn't build my fence according to standard building practice. My next question to you is: Show me your show me your degree, or you show me your certificate that you can make that decision. That's what I just made a approach to do that. Take it out. But if someone has a privacy fence and they have a patio inside of it and not junk, and the fence is leaning, would that would this also apply to them? I don't think. We do have a licensed contractor here who could possibly answer this question. Well, I mean, we don't have one on staff, and these police officers are not licensed contractors. I think, you as, know, as Eric said, is. it makes it easy for him to enforce it if it's yep. in there. Yep. And I think it gives everybody else the ability to understand, i got to install this thing correctly. Correct. Um, and you should And if you say correctly, that opens up a can of worms to everybody's yeah. interpretation. When you say standard building practices, you're limited to... Okay, what does that mean? I better go check it out and do it. Um, but I think to address the question I was asking, the lady, Robin Barker, who complained about her neighbor's fence falling over, we can't use this to go correct it because we'd have to have another ordinance that says all fences need to be properly maintained. I have a lot of neighbors with privacy fences, and that's the only reason I'm saying that. Yeah. Oh, that's on. Any more discussion? We could, but we're just making ours. You can have the junk, you just gotta hide it out of view. And that way you put up the fence. That's kind of. The thing is, why don't you, we don't even, in the contract business, we don't even use the wording standard building practice. I mean, that's a very loose term now. So why don't you just say that it conforms to international building codes? Well, we'd be at the <laughs> but we'd be at the same thing. We ain't got a permitting office for that. Somebody can go put up a fence himself, and then we're back to. Any more discussion? No. 
right now we have the motion to remove that wording. Um, motion and second it. All in favor of removing that wording, do so with show of hands. All opposed? Now we're back to third and final reading of 1708 as it is here. Any discussion on that? All in favor then of third and final reading of 1708 as written, uh, do so with show of hands. All opposed? And if we need to look at that again after we work it, then we can do that or look at that other wording, international, and, and see. Um, next item, excuse me, is 1709, and we're third in reading on that one. This has to do with the dilapidated structures. Is there a motion for third and final reading? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I, I have an amendment. Okay. If you all notice the things that are in yellow under the commercial park, I, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, it's on here on yellow. Okay. Go ahead. It is number four, broken. Oh, okay. Broken or missing windows, storm door skylights, or exterior light fixtures that are present. move this thing up? That are present for customer <laughs> safety. <laughs> this ain't touch screen, is it? Our attorney recommended we remove that are present for customer safety. And then the next line which is damaged or missing steps and or porch railings that are an obvious safety hazard, that are an obvious safety hazard needs to be removed too. All right, so you're saying you want to take out line item four on B. Uh-huh. All together. No. No. The part that says that are present for customer safety. Oh, so just take out that part. Yes. And then the next one, that are an obvious safety hazard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so there is a motion to amend. Um, is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Also, on that same section, number one, you got any doors. Shouldn't that be? Uh, garage doors, because up, up above you had garage doors. Or are you saying any doors at all, including garage doors? I think this would include those, because it sucks. Okay, so you're saying any doors, including garage doors. Pu public access or warehousing would yeah. be... Any door. Yeah, any mm -hmm. doors. Okay. I know what you mean, yeah, but I think that takes care of it. Mm -hmm. Am I a lawyer? No. But... Those two things do need to be removed. Um, any more discussion? All in favor then of that amendment to remove those two parts, uh, do so with show of hands. And I want to ask the question and make an amendment. Um, in residential line item four, we have the town administrator will grant such time for abatement as the town administrator determines is appropriate, blah, 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 blah. Do we need to add that same sentence to the commercial section, or do we take it out of that section and just add it at the bottom so it covers both? Okay, on number four, the part that begins the town, town administrator. administrator. will grant such uh, abatement as the town administrator determines is appropriate. Do we need to add that to the bottom part as well so that that would make sense. That would make sense. Or do we just take it out of that and add it to the bottom somewhere so it covers everything? I think it needs to be in both. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Well, I will make a motion then. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're saying that you want to grant abatement or that have the town administrator grant that he can grant time to make these repairs for yeah. commercial as well as residential? Yeah. Well, right now. I mean, that's what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Right now. He can only grant abatement extensions for roofs that have been damaged with holes and need repair shall be da 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 da. He can't grant extensions for anything else. That's the only thing he can grant extensions for. So that's what you're saying. You want to have that? Well, just for roofs. 
my question is, do we want to put it under commercial or do we, we want to just put it down at the bottom of the ordinance so that he can grant extensions on everything? It doesn't matter if it's A, one, two, three, or five, or B, one through, whatever it is, nine. Be a bad idea. Yeah, I agree. No, that's not a bad idea. So Take it out up here and put it at the bottom? Well, what you'd have to do is roofs that have been damaged with holes or in the need of repair shall be considered an issue, providing a 10-day period to... Well, and I think it'd just be, you'd say roofs that have been damaged and with holes or in need of repair shall be considered a violation and abatement issued, period. Then you would remove all that other stuff and then down at the bottom under, I guess you'd call it C1, maybe. Does that sound right, Bob? Come right. That's B. So we'll C. Well, it would be, you'd have A, residential, B, commercial, and then C, I don't know if you'd have one or just C, and then you'd say the town administrator will grant such time for abatements as the town administrator determines, yada, 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 and all that, which would be, so you understand what I'm saying? You got 10 days. 10 days. With the roofs, we made a point of saying, hey, you've got to come back to the town administration and get a and thing. I need more time than this. <coughs> saying you got a broken window, you need to show up and ask Bob for an extension on this across the board, whether you're commercial or residential. So, or he could um, deny those. He can. Well, I mean, you don't even have to make that decision. You've already got 10 days to do it. The only thing we were we were actually working on was the roof situation. Yeah, big things. Because the roofing contractors are hard to come by or hard to get doing. Exactly, but you're talking about adding it into... Well, that's what I'm asking. So it would apply to everything in all of it. No. That's what I'm asking. Do we that's want to what apply he's saying, to but I'm everything saying no. or just one? So just leave it the way it is? If you want to, to apply to everything and you want Bob to have the, the authority to go across the board and make determinations on a case-by-case -case basis as to whether or not he wants to extend the abatement periods if somebody asks him, I would do that. Personally, I think it would just be fine to add the section B6 and that identical abatement. Okay, so just add it to B6. Okay. The about, okay. About roofs. So you'd add it where? B6? B6. B6 is the roofs. Yeah. B6 is oh. the roofs. Okay. So, you with take, us, Renee? Take four and put it down where six is. You with us? I'm trying. <laughs> so we're leaving A4 as it is. Is that correct? Yeah. And adding. And then we're adding the town administrator, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, so take everything out of A4 and add it to A B6. All right, that makes sense. Okay. All right, you're, so, you're not taking it out of A4. You're leaving A4 alone. Right. You're just adding just it under it, six. Exact same thing, A4, so okay. And okay. replacing six, okay. So All right, so I'll make a motion then to take everything out of A4, leave it in A4, but take that same wording and exchange B6 with the new wording, the same as A4 wording. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. All right. So six look like A four. Is there a second? I second, second it. Okay. All right, make what do you say, Kathy? Make B six. Make B six look like A four. Like A four, I'll remember that. Okay. Any discussion? Oh, well, that makes sense. It does. All in favor then of that amendment, do so with show of hands. Well, the two amendments, right? Well, we already done the. We already voted. Didn't we vote on the first amendment? Yeah, it was five to eight. All right, so that one. All right, now I want to ask another question. Yeah, we already voted. Um, and I'm trying to think. Um, hmm. We spoke yesterday, me and Bob spoke, and I spoke with code enforcement Monday, Tuesday, one day? I don't know what day it was. Today's Tuesday. It must have been Monday. Um, and I'm not sure we still need to do this or we do need to do this. Um, 
when we passed it the first time, 1437, when we passed the residential dilapidated properties stuff, um, and I think, Kathy, you might remember I talked to you about putting a clause in there or whatever you call it that said, even though this is going to go into effect and even though we're going to start abating people, instead of writing up a ticket 10 days later, we would write up a ticket 30, 60, 90 days later, something, that we would go out and abate all these properties that needed it, but the people would know that they got until whatever, April 1st or some date. Give them extra time. That's what we do with any state law that's in yeah. the past. We give them extra time. We call it a that, I think that's... Is there a set time that you give for grace period? Uh, normally about 30 days. I mean, if, if something... Say the speed limit changes on Lake Murray Boulevard, we're not going to go out the next day and start tearing everybody up because we drop a 25. But we give them a grace period. We actually do that for school zone lights and the flash. When they start flashing at the beginning of the year, we let it, hey, don't forget school lights are No, I had thought about doing that. I think we weren't sure if we could put it in the ordinance or if we just say this goes into effect tomorrow, but we're not going to write tickets until whatever. You can April do the 1st. abatement tomorrow. <laughs> or no, this goes into effect tomorrow. We need to start writing tickets tomorrow. <laughs> no, you do the abatement first. Well, the abatement, right? Abatement and give them a thirty day or forty five day or 60, I don't know. They could still write abatements tomorrow. No, no. Enforcement here under shall be. Well, see, we want them to write abatements so that people know here's the things they got to do, and then you got X amount of time to do it, not 10 days, but you got. Now, after that April 1st, it would be a regular 10 day abatement notice. Well, then put it on the abatement notice, not on the uh, ordinance. I, I think so, too. Of course. It ought to be written That's on, right, the, on the abatement notice. On the abatement. Well, they would have to know that they can do that. We'd have to approve that. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I I've seen, I've seen in, in other municipalities, I've seen them have a blank spot there where you could say how many days they have. I've seen that. And the officer would actually write that in. But you've already spelled out by ordinance, haven't you? Huh? They said you've already spelled out your abatement period by ordinance. It's 10 days. Yeah, but I think, and there's some other... Stuff that, <coughs> yeah, 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 stuff that, um, and we like I say, I wanted to bring this up at the, before, and then I forgot about it. And then after we passed it, I thought about it, and then I thought, well, never mind, it's done, done. But then after we brought it back up, and then because some other issues, I kept thinking, we need to see about doing that. We ought um, to leave more leeway, but that would be on the abatement, it shouldn't be on the on the ordinance itself because that well, would be if it's. A 10-day abatement notice is a 10-day abatement notice. Unless we do something to tell them they get an extension, like here. I'm just saying we might want to offer... Oh, would the administrator have the leeway to, to... Not unless we approved it. We'd have to say something like, we want this thing to go into effect. We want them to get abatement notices so they know, but we're going to give until April... I don't, I'm just picking a date, April 1st. Not April, because that's... But May... Do we need to do it in this, or we just need to have a I mean, agreement? That's really, that's really more of an approval thing. I don't believe it. You don't need to do it as an ordinance. Let them do it. Let the let the code enforce yeah. people do it. Yeah. I mean, that's... You just give direction to them. Yes. They know that you do it. Other, other folks follow their approval. Yep, you're right. Okay. So if we make a statement that we're going to not abate stuff... We will not cite, issue citations. We will not issue citations until what date? April, April 1st. 1st. Uh, April 15th would be a month. Yeah, April 15th, I think that's right. Days. Good yeah. date. <laughs> Who forgets what? that? Yeah. Right. Everybody agree? April 15th? Tax yeah. day. Perfect. Perfect day. So I'll, I'll issue a, a letter to the police chief so you can give it to the code enforcement and I'll, everybody's 
Good. But they won't write up an abatement. They'll just go give a warning, and then 10 right. days before April 15th, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Just go by and say, hey, you need to fix this, and that's the And you have till April 15th to do it. Right, but I mean, right now, they would go abate this on April the 5th, or anything. They could go and issue the date tomorrow. Now, okay, so they can go ahead and do it now. They just got until whatever date we said, April 15th, to write a citation. Okay. Okay. So we all understand. Now we got the two amendments that took those lines out, and then we got the amendment where we moved A4 to B6. Mm -hmm. Any more changes? All in favor then of 1709 as amended with the two amendments. Uh, wait, wait uh, Eric, do we have any issues that will prevent us from writing um, abatement notices for commercial properties with this current ordinance? No. There's no issues that will stop us from doing that. Not that I can think of. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying that we go through all this, so we can be able to write. Abatement notice for commercial properties. That's the whole intent of what's doing through this. Okay. But right now, we're not going to write a citation until April the 15th. 15th. Okay. But yeah, they can go ahead and do the abatements. And All right, so back to um, all in favor then of 1709 as amended. Do so a show of hands. Next item is first... Reading of Ordinance 1710. This has to do with our comprehensive land plan. Is there a motion for approval? And what we'll do is make a motion, get a second, and then we can discuss it, and then we can amend it or defer it or pass it. So is there a motion for first reading of Ordinance 1710? Uh, so moved. And a second. You got, you got the, uh, I guess, somebody coming to talk to us about this? Um, what's his week. name was coming, but he's sick. He's got the flu, um, but that's why he handed these out a month ago so that you had time to look at them. And if you have any specific questions, I can send them to him in the mail. Um, and then that way he'll know what concerns you all have when it comes to the election. This is not a big deal, but the thing about the migratory birds and all that, where did we get that information from? Don't know. Cog. They have it all in there. Okay. <laughs> okay. <coughs> yeah, they take that. I, I found the bird thing interesting. And there's a public hearing on this next meeting? Okay. Any questions anybody have on any part of it or anything? Well, they, they basically take the one from the last one, which was April, I mean, uh, um, 2009, and the one that was before that, every 10 years, yeah, 10. we have to update it. Every five years, we have to look at it and do something to it, whatever they call that. And then they kind of add to it what they do in other towns. The only, I mean, it's, it's important, but it's also, um, you know, it's a report. If we put it on our desk. And shelf, that's where it is. If we look at it and read it and use it, then that's where it is. By law, um, you have to have it every 10 years. Yeah. But there is some good stuff in there that kind of gives you information about our town and we're growing or not growing or where we're growing or how we're growing and peoples and incomes and educations and all that kind of stuff that helps us do a better job. But the, it's old. The planning, well, it's always census, so. I know, because when's it, is the next census next year? But you can look like on page 2020. 10, for instance, on that one chart, population chain, they have that ACS, which is a, a guess, estimate. Yep. Um, they're normally not too accurate um, um, as far as what they think it will be, and then whatever the census comes up, they never, they never match up. Um, but it gives you for planning, such as the subdivisions and the neighborhoods and all those kind of things. Um, and if you read it, it does say our population growth isn't growing. It needs to be growing, um, and we need to work on that. Um, so I think it, it's got some stuff on there that some people who think we have no plan, we do have one. And 
it gives some information in there. A lot of it's, I don't know. Um, but it does give you the generic basic stuff of what we should be doing or what we should be trying to do or attempting to do. And he can be here next meeting to answer hopefully a whole lot more. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions about it now or? Press on. Everybody in favor of first reading of 1710, do so a show of hands. Next is the approval to award a contract for the construction of a wall or fence at the municipal complex not to exceed 30. Um, and we do have some bids. Some of them were fences, some of them were walls. Um, and for Mr. Glassmeyer's sake, I'm going to make a motion uh, to approve, not a dollar amount, but for us to discuss which one of these, if any, we want to do. Um, and I think one of the reasons we put it on here is um, Mr. Brown has asked us three or four times over the last couple of years, are we going to do the wall, we're going to do the wall, we're going to do the wall, we put the money in there. So I think we need to decide if we're going to do the wall or not and then either take the money out or spend it or either one. But then it's resolved. Um, I want to ask Mr. Brown to explain a little bit about the fence. Well, first we need a second if we're going to discuss it at all. So is there a motion or is there a second? Why do you need a second? We're just improving if we're going to spend the money. Because we passed an ordinance not too long ago that said we need seconds on all items, approvals and everything. So, is there a second? If not, it dies of lack of second. Okay. Um, so, I guess we don't need no wall and don't put it in our budget. Well, if, if we weren't using it for security... Which we weren't. No, the only thing it was brought up years ago for was to hide everything and make it more attractive and that kind of idea. And that put up had. a privacy fence, right? <laughs> Properly <laughs> installed. You could put up a privacy fence, but hide our trash. You'd probably be putting up that privacy fence more often than a cinder block fence, so it may not save. Do we that have much. a problem with illegal immigrants? <laughs> that we need a wall. <laughs> wow. So the wait, next item. Wait, did you have? Did you look at uh, planting some bushes along there? You did look at that, too? I mean, did you give us a quote on that, doing that? Oh, okay. <laughs> the next item is approval to award 1000 to the Sexual Trauma Services. Is there a motion for that? So moved. Is there a second? Second. This is from the Victims Advocate. The money would be coming from our Victims Advocate. <coughs> And I think we got some more information. Where to go? Yeah. I provided what we can use the money for, the types of groups that are allowed to apply for, and then they, of course, have to send these forms out of the money that's required for the state program. Um, I had mentioned that nobody's ever asked for it before, so my only concern here is we'd be opening up the Pandora's box, possibly. We might have everybody wanting to get the money out of there. We've only got Oh. So we can keep it if we want to. That's correct. You can't use it until. <coughs> okay. It can only be used for what's outlined in the proposed budget. Okay. Can we um, tell all those people that want it to submit something and then on a certain date? we will decide so that we don't give to one and then get another request and then another, another, another. I or we can decide that on... How would you get the word out to all the people? I wouldn't. I'd just say on such and such date, we're going to decide, and if somebody sends us stuff, we'll... I just don't know if I'd want to give money, and then two weeks later we get another request and another request and another. Yeah. Do we um, get a lot of requests? Well, I've got three now, so the okay. word came in, I've got three more. I don't know why. Do we take advantage of the sexual trauma services? Does our police department take advantage of that? Yeah, they actually came and did a presentation for us. Um, they are very active in the community. They handle uh, sexual trauma of women. They've been raped. And we personally haven't had to use them for any, any major crime like that. Right. Uh, but um, they are very active in, in the community. Hopefully we wouldn't have to ever use them. I don't know that, you know, any time I've ever called them, they send ever needed them. They're very friendly, very polite. They 
But we could take this list you gave us tonight and look over it and then decide. I guess my question would be, what can we use that money for and what do we do with it right now? Do we do anything with it right now? Does it just sit? We do? Right. But I mean, we just got this now, so I hadn't read it. So do we do a lot of this stuff with that money already or? Some Do we have money left over? When you go to his offices, you see all the stuffed animals. And Is that for multiple years or just one year? It just keeps building. Because we're not using it. Yeah. Okay. Well, can we defer this then so we can... Well, that's what I'm saying. We might take this home. I think we should. And then kind of yeah. do a better idea of what we, we want to do. And take those three that you've got. And is there more than three? Is there a lot of them out there that do that, Chief? But I mean, is there a lot of these? Is a lot of these companies like this one or groups that do that? Is it five, ten, fifteen, or or a lot? We have one in Irma? I don't think we have one in Irma, per se, but it's unique to just Irma. They usually try to, like, zone in their areas. But we could take this and then maybe get Bob to give us an idea, talking to Bobby so Dale, of which That's ones important. we use a lot, That's just a which I'll ones come to us a lot. if you withdraw your second. Withdraw. Well, we just defer it. We're just going to defer it for two weeks. Okay. So defer to the next meeting. Yeah. And then just get us some information about yeah. whom do we use a lot or whom do we send people to. And then we'll know that maybe those are the ones we'll give some of that money to. <laughs> okay. All right. Next is the appointment to the orchestra. Um, I don't have that lady's name, a person's name. I think it was in the briefing. Um Marnie Robinson, and she was who the Oak Street Commission um, voted on. So, is there a motion to appoint Marnie Robinson? Robertson. Robinson. Isn't that right? Oh, okay. You want her appointed? Okay, I make the motion. All right, I second it. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, then. Of Marnie Robinson um, to be appointed to the orchestra as a voting member. Uh, do so with show of hands. <laughs> Next is presentation by citizens. This is where anyone who wants to address anything on council, regardless of whether it's on the agenda or not, may do so at this time. All we ask you to give us your name and address for the record. Oh, now we know. <laughs> I, I've got a good sense of what these guys do and how hard they work. And the last I checked, at one point they had three officers, and now you're down to two because there's some personnel changes. So they're, they're already short staffed. Okay, and they stay busy with three guys. And, and, and uh, I would ask that you, 
accept the stats of the reports that they already generate to see if that means you need before you ask them to do any more labor intensive work because they're, they're already at pretty much up to your necks. So, you know, take a look at that first if you would. If that doesn't keep you from coming back to it, but don't, don't, don't pile more work on it because I don't think they'll do it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't know if this situation needs to be addressed in executive meeting or here in council right now about the problem of the uh, issuance of the uh, license for. Uh, We're going to address it in the executive session and okay. kind of give Bob some leak or some direction. Okay. So, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. What you do? And anyone else? And next then is the discussion on parking exemptions for properties that become non-conforming after road widening. Um, I put this on there so we could kind of talk. Eric's done some um, research and whatnot. And I think he found out um, that we can do, or that a property owner, whether it's Mr. Doolis' property or somebody on Broad River Road after that road gets widened, can come get a variance and I wanted to kind of talk about that and make sure we understand that would be the best way to do it or not, then do we need to do that ordinance that kind of does that? About a couple different things here. Um, so first you're talking about the parking exemption, so we'll leave the business license to a separate issue. Yeah. say that you only have eight spots in front of your building and that's all the parking you have for the whole thing and they come in and wipe out all of your parking and you don't have, you got nothing but a retention pond behind so you can't build behind it feasibly. They do that, they have wiped out all effective use of this property and they should buy the whole thing from you. So it shouldn't, well you shouldn't necessarily even need, you shouldn't even need a variance in most circumstances because they would have been fully compensated at the value of that property. In fact, I got a case right here. It was 37 pages long. Otherwise, I'd have made everybody a copy of it. <laughs> but it, uh, and it's not from South Carolina, but it was the best one I could find on point. That kind of discusses the process by which the, um, the government would go through when they were doing a, it's called eminent domain taking. Um, and in this particular case, it involved a hotel that had 85 spaces inside, 85 units inside of it. And when they came through and widened the road, they dropped the parking down to 73. And according to the local ordinance, they had to have a parking spot per unit. So they, in essence, made it so there were 12 unusable units inside of the building. Wow. And they calculated that out over the lifespan, the expected lifespan of this uh, hotel, how much the lost revenues were going to be. And the state wanted to offer them $115,000. And they wanted $3 million. And at the end of the day, they ended up giving them a couple million dollars for the spot that they lost. So again, I don't know why you would necessarily need an ordinance or even a variance if you have been completely compensated. That said, if the property is still usable, um, then the question you have to ask, that, that the ZBA would be answering when somebody came and asked for a variance would be, okay, this property is still usable. Is it usable in the same fashion? And if not, is there something special about this property that makes it so they can't comply? And after they think about those things, they would then have to decide, well, okay, there's a retention pond in the back. You can no longer build. That might be a reason to grant a variance if you wanted to put it on the side or something, say like that, that wasn't allowed. And I'm just talking hypotheticals here because I don't have the code in front of me. Um, but again, I don't even necessarily think a variance would be an appropriate remedy because they would have been compensated for it already. 
but they may not be compensated for the loss of revenue. They may be compensated for the value of that land. They should have been. Yeah, but I don't if know that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, <laughs> DOT doesn't always, they'll start out with compensating for the square footage, but then it's up to you to sue them to get more, right. kind of. Right. I mean, and I don't know that the town needs to pass an ordinance to protect them from not protecting themselves after the fact, but you may choose to do so, but I don't know that the CBA is going to necessarily grant a variance. Um, now, there is something called um, the call it the grandfathering at the last meeting. It's pre-existing non-conforming uses, and it's the way you have it spelled out in your um, your own ordinances. Um, I believe it is under 7.92, existing non-conforming uses, buildings, and structures. So that would apply if you had a change in, like you did tonight, if you changed a law and the place was conforming prior to, but you changed it as far as you're talking about road widening, losing, I did look into what other jurisdictions were doing, and they actually go the other direction with the ordinances. They go the direction of saying, all right, we anticipate that Lake Murray Boulevard, St. Andrews Road, Broad River, and whatever else will be expanded in the near future. We have identified these roads as roads that will be expanded or potentially could be. And they say, instead of our normal 15 foot setback from the road that we require, for building, we want 25. And you will not build anything permanent in that 25 feet, including parking. You will not utilize the parking, you will not utilize temporary parking in that place to comply with zoning ordinances. The reason we do this is so we never have to have this issue come up in the future. When they build out Broad River Road, you've already told everybody before they built on it, don't build your permanent parking that you're gonna need to comply with all ordinances in the 25 feet right next to the road because we expect it. That's how other ordinances, other municipalities have dealt with it. Now, as far as it having already happened, I'm not familiar with Broad River Road and whether it's happened, what type of developments occurred out there, and who's going to be affected by this. Well, according to the map, there's a lot of businesses that could lose their parking. And that's what I'm trying to deal with is how do we keep us from getting in the middle of it, fighting stage down the road when somebody comes and says, hey, they took my property and now I ain't got parking, not necessarily just for the ordinance, but we ain't got enough for their business. That's between them and DOT. But if we don't issue them, if they sell whatever, then they come to us and say, hey, it's not my fault. Can't y'all give me a variance? That's why I wanted to do an ordinance that just said if you lose it due to that, then we will exempt the parking requirements. Well, doing that, uh, or something to that effect. Yeah, I want to point out one thing about doing that. If you say... Listen, it doesn't matter <coughs> if you lose your parking because of a road widening. That's in essence saying that the parking requirement was arbitrary to begin with. The whole point of the parking was that we need you to have so much parking because you have a retail establishment and we don't want you coming in and out of the Taco Bell and not having any parking whatsoever. And we have people jacked up all the way down Lake Lake right. Boulevard waiting to turn in and out of the Taco Bell. That's the whole point of the parking. Um, and so to say, well, if it happens to you because of road widening, if we're going to let you keep on with the use, then you have potential for unintended consequences of how that parking is going, how that is going to affect your traffic flows. But that is why that, that parking requirement is there. Um, and again, this presumably was addressed when they got purchased by the, the county. I mean, again, the state or the county, when they did eminent domain, they should have come in and said, all right, we're taking all your parking, so that's the same thing as taking all your business. So Most of the businesses on Broad River Road, though, were there when we annexed them. Mm -hmm. We went to Walmart. No, I'm talking about the ones between Royal Tower mm -hmm. and Bilo. Oh. Especially, or you got Todd Ellis, and you got the pain center, and you got yeah. the dentist office, you got the chiropractor down here, I'm and the real estate company. I was thinking about Lake Murray Flooring. It's, it'll be gone. Well, some of those, too. Of course, they're not in our town, but that's between them and the county. But the ones really between the elementary school, and that's an area there that, I mean, if you look at the road widening that they're gonna do and on their map, it's either take it from this side or take it from that side or take more from the school side and, and um, but. It's a mess. 
Um, it's a mess. I just don't want them coming and bitching with us when they can't sell their property or now they can't lease it out to somebody else because they moved out to get to a bigger building <coughs> and now they can't sell their property because they don't meet our parking requirement. Um, I think we could do an ordinance or something that says, fine, if you want to sell it, if you want to rent it, if you want, and, and you ain't got enough parking, that's your business, but we're not going to keep you from using that property. Now, the only other thing, too, we'd have to have something because let's just say they have 40 and they lose 10. Now they got 30 and they need 35 for whatever. Um, we give them a variance or we give them an ordinance that says, okay, fine, we don't care. Um, if they change that use to something that needs 45 and they never had but 40, then no, they don't get it. But as long as whatever that use is, is no more than what they originally had or their need, then fine, you can get writing that and wording that. I, you know, I think I gave Eric something that was <coughs> very long, <laughs> very wordy, but. Yeah, but you're talking about on Broad River Road on that side where Todd Ellis's office is. On both sides, really. On the other side, it's a, it's a school with plenty of, you know, frontage there that could be and why the you would know the they church, could, right? but the church beside them so they got no take, property behind them. They would take, they would probably take more from that side than the other side. And but like, do, like, like, like Eric said, though, he said that the, it's up to the owner to retain a lawyer and get DOT uh, on board with what they're doing and make sure it doesn't impact them. And if they don't do that, how is that our fault? And then we're going to lose the town of Ramos fault. What twenty businesses through there that are just going to close? How, how, you, you're speculating that they're going to close. Rot. You're speculating that they're going to close. You're speculating that they're going to lose yeah. parking. You're speculating they're going to widen the road. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a 20-year process true. right there. I mean, you know, That's I think it's... 2016. It's probably a premature ordinance if you wanted to try to... Well, it may be that. premature, but it's coming, and the people are already complaining. You got an email. Well, let them, you got let an them, email. When it comes, I've let about five when it, when it comes and let us through there deal with it then. That they know it's coming. The church is upset. Um, yeah, Irmo Tire and the Renner Place and all that, they're all same thing. You can't take it from one side and then move the road this way like that. They're not going to do that. Now, they're going to compensate, but they pretty much already said, we're going to pay people what the land is worth, not their monetary law. Yep. Or they can take us to court and sue us and see what happens. Um, but, yeah, I think we need to be a little bit more proactive in that and decide how to handle it on our behalf. But there's an answer. Okay. A good answer, anyway. Yeah, the answer so is that the ordinance I gave you, can you write that better? <laughs> okay. Can you write it better in two weeks so we can have it Do back? Do you use punctuation? <laughs> or is that too much? Is four weeks better? Uh, I mean, I can try, but I'm going to need some well, extra. Well, I mean, I can take the way I've added and put what I think the way it's hard to look on. If I was going to do it the way I would do it, I suppose. You want me to do it that way? I'm yeah. That'd be fine. And let me look you at really it. You really need to go sure. on Broad River between North Royal Tower up toward Walmart and and see. I mean, potentially I we're going to lose. I just had, it's been a while since I've been down that road. Not it's a while. I was like, it, I mean, as as the mayor was saying, I mean, you'd almost have to do this, and they're not going to do that. You'd almost have to do this. Well. And I can give you this, I want it back, but um, here's a map of the first of those areas. And the right of way right now on, uh, let's see, that's the elementary school, whatever um, those two buildings that face each other, the right of way is going right through the roof line on one of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now, they can move it across the street. Well, the right-of-way can be there, but, I mean, they're not going to build a road there. Yeah, but you can't use the right-of-way, and you can't park on it. You can't do anything on it. And if, it's, if it's already there, they're not going to take it away from them. If they do take it away from them, that's what Eric said, that they would have be compensated well, for being taken away from them. I'm just saying, if you look at this thing the way it is right now, there's probably 
a whole lot of parking down that side of the road. I mean, that's going to be as wide as, as Lake Murray Boulevard. Yes. And maybe even wider because they're going to have bicycle paths. Sure they are. Doesn't. I'll believe um, that. Too. Unless they get rid of them, but that's not <laughs> likely. Um, they're going to have a lot of bicycle paths because they're, they're going to have to buy all the properties on both sides. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of buying. A lot of money. So we discussed that. Any more discussion? No. Next is an executive session, a legal matter. Uh, regarding the doula property, is there a motion to go into executive session? I so move. And a second? Second. All in favor? All right. Leave your mics. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave them, don't.